If you're following me along in the Tech Shorts Foundation series, you'll know that we're trying to help you frame your understanding of the HPC in the cloud experience using the familiar building blocks in every HPC environment. That's compute, storage, networking, and software. Now, to date, we're going to talk about the AWS Elastic Fabric Adapter, or EFA, which is our specialized HPC and machine learning network interface. Now, by this point, you're wondering how this thing works. It's not magic nor marketing, but it's a creation that comes from looking at the problem through a different lens. Our frame of reference is always maximizing application performance. We're not fond of trying to minimize microbenchmark results like the famous MPI ping pong, since that approach contains a lot of assumptions. So instead, we start with the customer's workload and work backwards from that. And then we solve the problems that unfold from traveling in this kind of reverse direction. It often turns out that they're very different problems to the ones you find by building on your assumptions and working forwards. As a bunch of HPC engineers, our assumptions would have told us to put a lot of InfiniBand into some racks, in a corner of a data center somewhere, wiring them up with some fast and fancy compute nodes, and, you know, do it the traditional way. We would have spent months trying to keep cable short and worrying about single packet latency test results. And then we would have spent years trying to keep little high performance islands in our data centers connected with other little high performance islands as they grew and as all the other things grew around them too. But working backwards forced us to have a longer think about the problem from a different angle. That's not because InfiniBand is a terrible idea. It's a great idea. It's just that InfiniBand wasn't designed for the environment we find ourselves in. AWS runs very large data centers. Most of our machines are in use 24 hours a day. Literally millions of customers are doing a great many different things and coming and going from our fleet more or less constantly as their needs fluctuate minute by minute. Sometimes those machines are selling books or toys on Amazon.com or serving up pictures of cats. Sometimes they're serving out videos to you through Netflix and then other times they're running molecular dynamics codes for a drug company that's searching for a treatment for a virus. Remember that? So with that as the context, the constraints on us and the expectations of our customers are very different from the normal constraints when you're sitting down to architect a large scale supercomputer or an HPC cluster for a lab. Since everything is running all the time, we have to service everything in place. Occasionally, we need to just rebalance the fabric topology so that we can add a few racks of nodes and well, we can't do that. Customers really don't like having a cloud data center shut down for a few days at a time while we rewire things to expand the network. If Netflix or Prime Video went down for several days, I'm pretty sure the zombie apocalypse would happen for real. Adding to this is the fact that every day we're wheeling in truckloads of new server racks, so our fabric has to be able to cope with this monotonically increasing, ever-expanding structure that's carrying workloads representing quite literally every part of the economy. So this also forced us to acknowledge that network congestion, drop packets, random hotspots aren't exceptions, they're normal. That's true of every large network, by the way. We're just being super honest with ourselves over it. So with that in mind, we went for a different approach to this. The first case we looked at was CFD performance. At an MPI level, when the nodes are wanting to talk to each other, they weren't exchanging a single, single MPI message. When the nodes in a CFD job talk to each other, they want to throw thousands and thousands of packets around. When we looked at molecular dynamics, the numbers were a little different, but the principle remained the same. Lots of data movement, lots of messages, which means lots of packets. Not shocking to you by now, but when we looked at climate codes and weather simulations, well, you get the idea. The solution began to emerge by just studying real applications. Now, we also like the idea of OS Bypass doing a lot of the work. We had a lot of experience moving hypervisor functions out of software and into hardware uh, called AWS Nitro. If anyone has ever told you about a hypervisor tax, that's the notional performance penalty induced by using software virtualization, well, Nitro was the project that ended that at AWS. It was done by putting all of the hypervisor services out into some custom hardware, the Nitro board, 
inside every EC2 node. What Nitro does is it turns all those things that a hypervisor would normally construct for you in software, virtual networks, virtual disks and so forth, and makes them hardware calls across a bus. So when you're talking to a storage LUN, which is how elastic block storage looks to an instance, the software services are running in the Nitro board in silicon and the LUN is presented to the motherboard's operating system as just a PCI device. That makes it incredibly secure as well. Nitro gave us a set of methods for being very creative and so we come to EFA and a thing called SRD which underpins it. Now, SRD is kind of a remix on the InfiniBand reliable datagram protocol idea. SRD is the scalable reliable datagram. There are several things that differentiate SRD from IRD and other packet moving things like TCP. Now, our network is very large and therefore quite complex. That means the larger the numerical size of your job, the more nodes you're using and so the larger and more complex is the network infrastructure between any two nodes. We wanted to turn that into an advantage rather than seeing it as a challenge to work around. So we recognize that there's a lot of usable pathways between any two nodes, many of which are about as fast as each other. So we relax the constraint that packets had to arrive in order. And by doing that, one little change, we could deliver whole streams of messages across multiple different pathways at the same time. It's kind of like a packet swarm over the fabric. This buys us some insurance too. If any one of those data flows gets congested, like a switch fails or a transceiver goes on the blink somewhere, all the other flows keep going. Now these are real scenarios too. I don't want you to lose sleep over it, but hardware fails and malfunctions. A robust protocol shouldn't need to assume perfection in order to get its job done. Other protocols do struggle with these scenarios with a thing called head of line blocking. And because since they stream all the packets over a single path, probably the fastest one, they maintain the in order delivery thing and that makes them hostage to single packets getting lost. When that happens, everything behind that single packet, every other packet in the flow that's yet to be sent, gets held up waiting for the packet loss to get noticed, that usually means a timeout, and then resent. Repeat that a lot and you can imagine the traffic pileups. That makes the 405 in Los Angeles look calm and tranquil. Since we don't use a single pathway, we're less impacted by these events. Now we also don't use every possible pathway. We typically choose the best 16 and stream packets down all of them at once. We also took a few novel approaches to congestion control. And as I mentioned, we offload most of the work for moving data to the Nitro system and the EFA hardware, rather than getting the kernel and CPU to do it. You can read a paper in IEEE Spectrum, which dives into all the details. Now, our standard candle for this experiment was to see how it impacted actual real applications. With all these tricks, lots of cool silicon we invented and the kernel offloading, SRD dramatically dropped the P99 tail latency by more than an order of magnitude. That was a major step because workloads like model training and machine learning, fluid dynamics, weather, and all those other tightly coupled HPC codes, they're typically only as fast as the slowest rank. So reducing the tail latency actually had quite a dramatic impact on these applications. And as an HPC job gets numerically larger, in other words, the nodes, the user wants to scale to a larger and larger number of nodes, the number of networking pathways open to SRD expands. And so the number of potential pathways for the packets warm to travel expands as well. If you do the math on this, the challenge of scale and the opportunity that SRD could exploit from those additional pathways, well, it pretty much nets out as even. So that gives us confidence we've really hit on something that's very, very scalable. If these TechShorts Foundations talks are helping you get your head around how AWS can work with your codes, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel so you can get notified when we have more material like this for other HPC topics. And don't hesitate to contact us on Twitter if you want us to spend some time on a topic you're interested in. Thanks for watching. See you next time.